there is some vibration here. So I encourage you to watch part one of this bench grinder project where I removed the rotor, dynamically balanced it with Martin Lawrence HS-XL dynamic balancing kit. As stated in part one, this grinder will be dedicated to sharpening drill bits and chisels and tools and the such. There will never be any heavy grinding done here to maintain uh, a very, very smooth running grinder. And to start off on the right foot, I splurged, I went on Amazon and I got two brand new grinding wheels, this 36 grit one, and for the other side, an 80 grit. And always a good idea to ring test a stone before installing it. If you hear a thud, it's no good. guess at how rough it is, I'm actually going to measure it. So we've got the HS-XL balancing kit out, an S304 accelerometer here, an S304 accelerometer here, the S10K laser pointing here, with everything communicating with the H-scope app. Now I wasn't just imagining that. Look at how rough that is. 2.4G. Okay, so what gives here, right? We know that the motor is really, really smooth. Two brand new grinding wheels. And yet, look at this vibration. There's a bunch of things that can cause that, especially on the 3450 RPM grinder and we're going to address them one by one. Starting with this here. Notice this kind of slop here. I'd like to take some of that up. So I was looking for something that would take up the slack a little bit. So, and you don't want to overdo it. So I was looking for something fairly thin. Um, I'm using scotch tape. And I gave it just one wrap around the journal here. And I'm liking it. It's going on there. Nice and snug. But not too much so. So that's going to help in, in three ways. So it's going to help uh, prevent wobble. Side to side wobble. Uh, you can't just rely on these uh, narrow flanges. Uh, that's kind of hit and miss. The other thing is, it's going to uh, keep it uh, in a radial position, okay? And the third one will become clear as this video unfolds. So now check this out. Okay, brand new stone. It's uh, snug on the uh, bore, so, you know, uh, it should be concentric, but there's a bit of run out. Not much, but I want that out of there. Now, this burr style of stone dresser, uh, that might be okay to uh, clean up a wheel, you know, expose some new grit, but um, you can't remove radial run out. It will only follow it and ultimately even make it worse. For that, you need a single point diamond like this two carat that I picked up on Amazon. 
Notice this long shank. Now the idea behind that is to draw this across the wheel very lightly, only hitting the high spot. But for that you need a guide tool. And uh, you won't really find one um, because uh, these tool rests differ too much, you know, they vary from uh, grinder to grinder. So you're kind of left to come up with your own idea for that. So I CAD and 3D printed this guide. This edge will follow against the back of the tool rest. And I can index this shank in and out of here. And notice this oval that I CAD here on the end. Once I have it adjusted and I press, it will lock it in. I don't need any other set screws or anything else like that. I like it. So all we do with these waveforms is that we zoom in into an area where it was running at full speed. We anchor the 360 degree overlay to the two notches made by the laser reference. And then we can slide the cursor over and I'm going for a trough here. All right. And the S304 accelerometers can be uh, orientated to our liking. Uh, the polarity plus and minus G are indicated on the accelerometers and the magnet is reversible so that we can have it like this where a trough means that it's light and a crest means that it's heavy. Throughout all the tutorials that I'm going to be doing on HS-XL, I'm going to be very consistent with this interpretation. So this was the worst one, right? It was like 2.4 G peak to peak. So here at this trough, right? It's showing that uh, at 125 degrees, uh, we're getting 0.88 G minus, right? So if you double that, it'd be like a 1.7 G still of uh, unbalance, uh, quite a bit still. So, it's light at 125 degrees. Okay, zero, 90, plus another 35 degrees is 125. It is light right here. Now, we've done everything here. This is running true. Um, the motor's good. Why would it be light here? Well, that's because the density is not even throughout uh, the stone. I 3D printed this small bouncing disc, okay? Notice the slot. Notice the arrow that's in line with the slot and these small raised ribs here that will go against the blotter and help keep this disc referenced to the grinding wheel. Now I put a small pencil mark here at that 125 degrees. I'm going to line the pointer to it and I'm going to start off with it being concentric, you know, like I'm not going to have it all the way out in the slot. We'll start off with that and see where we go. Now, you remember earlier I mentioned that there would be a third advantage to that scotch tape taking up some of the slack on that wheel? That is so that whenever I release this index and, and adjust that, I can kind of rely that the stone will always be in its same place on that spindle, that I, there's no slop. And I didn't go to town on here, uh, don't sweat it. So 
slight improvement from 0.88 G to 0.7 G, still at that same 125 degree location. So still here, needs to be uh, brought out uh, to add more weight right here. I'm going to try that. Same location, I just went too far. The trough uh, became a crest, right? So, we're just gonna back it away a little bit. Right there. And snug it up. So now look at this guys, 0 0.06 G. You remember that this stone started out at 2.4 G peak to peak. Now off camera, I'm going to repeat everything that I did for the 80 grit stone for this 36 grit one. Okay? I'm going to wrap some scotch tape. I'm going to position that nice and snug there. I'm going to dress it up with a single point diamond and I'm going to use HS-XL and bring it back down to the same level as I did with this guy. Okay, so I got the 36 grit wheel balanced, right? Started out with this, which is uh, 0.26 G peak to peak. And I ended up with this, 0.05 G. Just by shifting and adjusting this small balancing disc that I invented. Now I'm not big on uh, trying to seek patents for some of my ideas. Uh, I'll feed my family, I'll feed my cat, but I have no intentions of feeding patent lawyers. That said, sometimes it's these small, simple ideas that have the best chance of success with patents. Hey, I went all out on this project. I even got myself some of these small LED light bulbs. So, that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's really hard to focus with everything shaking around, you know? Nice. Catch you guys later.